Lo and behold, I am back, here again to do another review of my zombie movies. Last time I covered most of them, a bit over half of the zombie movies I own, um, and now I'm just going to finish it off. Uh, I just have a pile of them here. I'm not in these. And I'm just going to choose the one I'm going to do first. I think, actually, I'm going to start with some of the Return of the Living Dead movies. Now, Return of the Living Dead, part one. Now, it's, it's, it's an awesome movie. I, I, I was actually really surprised about this movie. Um, I thought it might be not as good because it's like a horror comedy movie, but it actually turned out really, really good. I didn't think, like, it was a good, like, the comedy, like, I, I, I watched some of the special features and they're talking about how the comedy isn't really totally intentional. The comedy sort of comes out of stuff that wouldn't necessarily be funny to the, uh, characters in the situations that they're in in the movie, but they are funny to the viewer just because, you know, like, they're freaking out and stuff, and it's funny because you know it would never happen, but it's, it's, it, it's interesting to sort of see their reactions. Really great zombies. The Tar Man zombie who gets his head knocked off is really... He, he's like the best zombie ever. Um, the characters are really funny, like the punk guys. I really like the music in this one. Music by 45 Grave, I think it was. 45 Grave is an awesome band. And, um, yeah, I was just really blown away with this. There's another documentary talking about... It's called The Decade of Darkness, I think it is. And they talk all about, like, horror movies, not just this movie, like, they talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. It's all just, like, horror movies of the 80s. But, um, yeah, they talk about, like, Motel Hill and all sorts of different crap there. It's, it's a great release. Um, oh, wait, hang on. It's Return of the Living Dead Part 4. That isn't. Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Uh, not as good as the first one. It was... It was funny, because... It really seemed like they were just sort of trying to do the same movie over again. Like, this movie has, I think it has some of the same actors in it, has some of the same lines. It's sort of the same movie, but it's got different parts to it. It's, um, it's, it's got some new cast members, too, like some little, like, it's more of a, it's sort of funny, because I think it's rated 18 or something, but it, it's sort of like, it's almost shot like it's a kid's movie in a way. Like, cause there's a lot of kids in the movie, and, it's sort of, it's strange that way, but it's still a lot of fun to watch. I really like the cover, too. It's a great cover. Getting some flair off of it, but it's a great cover. Yeah, great movie. Okay, now we go for this. Return of the Living Dead, Necropolis. Doesn't really count in the Return of the Living Dead series, in my opinion. It's sort of like the, um, the final one, Rave to the Grave or something. Um, it's not done by the same people. It's not really a horror comedy. It wasn't as good as the other ones. I, I don't think you can really do Return of the Living Dead in our time frame. I don't think it's a good idea to even attempt to do the Return of the Living Dead movies in our time frame. The Return of the Living Dead movies, they're, they're 80s. Like 80s, early 90s, but 2000, it doesn't work for Return of the Living Dead. It's not, like, the culture has changed too much for, like, you know, the humor to work and the good... That's why, like... It just old culture is way better. Like eight, like sixties through to the early nineties. That was the golden age. Like maybe even some of the fifties. But from now on, it just seems like the time frame we're living in really sucks. And that's these just movies aren't movies aren't as good now. I'm really upset about that. It just I I know people will be looking back at the movies of this. Well, I'm hoping that people will at least some people will be able to look back at this time frame of movies and say, wow, well, those movies are really cool. Like, I look back at the 80s movies that way. But, um, yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not, I'm not happy. The movies now just, they're all Hollywood corporate. There's a lot of low budget stuff coming out, but it doesn't get good distribution. There's very little low budget movie distribution. And, like, it's, it's sort of a good movie, but overall it's just, I'm not pleased with this. I, I don't think they should continue the Return of the Living Dead movies up into the 2000s. Like, it's, it's the same, it's just sort of a rehash. This movie was like Catch That Kid meets a few of the movies, from, or the zombies from like Dawn of the Dead. And even then, some of the zombies are like cyborg zombies, which is actually really cool. But, you know, come on, you can't do Return of the Living Dead in any other time frame in the 80s. I mean, 
I'm, I'm sure that they probably just named it Return of Living Dead Necropolis so that the low budget movie would get some like attention like they so it would get some appeal and people would take notice of it so they would add it to their collection so that people would see the movie but come on man be, or be original with this sort of thing it, it ruins a good series uh, 